So, good evening everyone. Once again, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present on this topic which is not actually listed, uh, but there are some confusion, so I'm, it's the last minute that I have digged out this presentation on PCV. Uh, I'd like to thank my fellow who also actually had an important role in managing this case. So, um, the, I would be discussing a little bit about how PCV is diagnosed, what are the treatment modalities, but overall this session is about role of cataract surgery, how to decide cataract and retina as cause of vision loss. So we have been debating whether we should do both together, one first, second, what should be the sequence, but first of all we should be clear whether cataract is there or not and whether there is a retina problem or not. That should be absolutely crystal clear. If there is no cataract, but again, how do you know whether there is cataract or not? I'll come to that. There are a few guidelines. It doesn't require artificial intelligence. It's natural learning. The 62-year-old gentleman presented vision loss 10 days and no history of trauma, ocular surgery prior. But 10 days history of vision loss, someone says sudden. Cataract is insidious. See? Patient will not say since yesterday I have vision loss or 10 days. We generally ask, is sudden vision loss usually a different cause? This patient was diagnosed with PCV and submacular hemorrhage 12 years ago, had received multiple injections, PDT. On examination, vision in the left eye is 20, 30 and 12. But now I will come to the point as a comprehensive ophthalmologist. That means we may be doing cataract, we may be evaluating retina also, sometimes we can manage medical retina cases also, we may be doing injections also. So if we evaluate cataract, one eye is six by six, there is already a comparator eye. So if you do a torchlight examination, let's say above the age of 60, everyone is going to have cataract. There is going to be some opacification. But you cannot decide cataract surgery based on torchlight examination. The first thing, if you ever are deciding cataract surgery decisions on torchlight examination, it's a no-no. Please stop doing that. You must have a slit lamp evaluation before you advise any cataract. The other thing, is, as I was saying, there is a normal eye. In this patient, right eye is normal, 6 by 6. Assess the lens status in the 6 by 6 eye. Assess the lens status in the blurred vision eye and see if the cataract is same or not. You don't need an LOCS at that point of time, a graph to compare. But the normal eye vision is a good comparator by itself at that point itself. So if the cataract is the same, either the nuclear sclerosis, there is no posterior subcapsular cataract, it's all the same, and one eye is 6 by 6, other eye is, let's say, 6 by 9, 6 settle, whatever it is, the answer is straightforward, that there is probably some other cause for the vision loss. I mean, I am just teaching here step by step why, whether cataract is there or not. Looks very basic, looks very simple, but sometimes we just misjudge based on a particular, you know, let's say torchlight examination, say you have cataract. But even otherwise, with experience, cataract surgeons also start knowing that this kind of cataract is not explaining this vision. I have, so many experienced surgeons would say, okay, this lens to me looks like more like 612 to 618 kind of vision. Why is this patient having counting finger vision? That's when you start evaluating the retina or optic nerve very carefully. The other way to do is, let's say if you have taken a fundus photograph, look at the clarity of the photograph in both eyes. Is it the same? Is there any hazy view in one eye which may be accounting for the vision loss? It could be cataract. If not, if the clarity is the same, look at other pathology, mac macula, optic nerve. And there, this patient is obvious that in the left eye there is a subretinal bleed, subretinal fibrosis, right eye is PD. This is a multicolor imaging. What about OCT? Obviously, in all of these cases, all the speakers earlier have shown OCT. If there is any doubt, you must pick up OCT. I don't want to go into details of management of PCV, as this is not the uh, appropriate forum for that. But yes, this patient has a PED and subretinal hemorrhage. We did ICG, it shows a nice branching neovascular network and polyps. And this patient has, uh, by definition, a cataract, but it is not the 
operable cataract. It's not the cause of the vision loss. So you don't have to do a cataract surgery in the left eye. The left eye is subretinal hemorrhage. 10 days history. Cataract is similar in both eyes when we had the comparing uh, with the comparing it with the normal eye in the right eye and obviously in the fundus photo clarity was similar and we picked up. Uh, so management option, this eye doesn't need a cataract surgery uh, and there are these are the different options. I don't want to go into brolicizumab but uh, we gave one injection and there was some improvement, S subretinal hemorrhage was still there. I'll go straight to the ICG over here uh, at six months there is some regression of polyp uh, and one year after the uh, overall injection that is six months after the third brolicizumab you see the subretinal hemorrhage has gone away there is no PED here ICG also shows no polyp and the OCT is also much better this patient is maintaining good vision at this point of time so this is the sequence of OCT and ICG at presentation six months one year and then this is the OCT at various time points. So I would like to conclude that we have enough tools in our own clinical skills right from our ophthalmology PG residency MSDNB what we are doing that is what needs to be applied. Uh, and if we are good in that, we will not have this debate about what should I do, who should take the credit for better vision. Sometimes we have cataract surgeons doing cataract surgery when the retina has major problem and a disgruntled person comes to a retina person. And the other way around with Dr. Lalit was saying, a retina surgeon is keeping on giving injections and retina surgeons also miss cataracts, right? It's not always the other way around. Cataract surgeons may miss retina problem, but retina surgeons also can miss cataract. And then the credit goes to the cat. Either way, look at the patient as a whole. Whole patient has to be treated by us, either by alone or in collaboration with our colleagues. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thanks, Dr. Lalit. Any questions? You, uh, uh, Raja, you continue giving injections, but sometimes, you know, in between the patient gets a cataract surgery done outside because, you know, out of the institute, sometimes it happens too, and then they come back to you post that with the, with the cataract done. So that, those situations also happen. So you oh, yeah, absolutely. So you patients on that. Yeah, so it, it, I don't mind if someone gets a cat as long as it was indicated and it was not an unnecessary. And we have a frank discussion with the patient beforehand itself. So one minute, I'll ask you a question. Dr. Mudit has to go, so he'll be presenting. And Dr. Shantanu Mandal is here. So maybe Mudit, he'll... So I have a question for you. Uh, since you were giving brolicizumab with IPCV and that can cause some inflammation, cataract also can cause inflammation. So do you give a gap between... Um. Yeah, I would give usually three months gap is from my experience. There is no guideline on that. Yeah. IPCV, uh, I mean, brolicizumab can cause inflammation, but at this point of time, we know how that inflammation occurs. After how many injections, it's not immediate. The first day after injection, you don't see, those are not the typically reported brolicizumab inflammation. Usually two weeks after the second or third or fourth injection is when you see that inflammation. Whereas if cataract surgery is done, you will have an immediate inflammation. So those are some differentiators, but your question, there is no level one evidence. I would still keep a gap of three months before the two.